Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime, question mark. Well, that's what we're going to be addressing in this video. But we're going to start off by going into the lodge being for sale and Jagger's tribute. When Terry Dean went up along a bumpy mountain road to Lost Trail Lodge just a couple of days ago, that's Kylie's family home in the woods, she came across this sign. The fact is, the family were trying to sell the lodge before Kylie's death. In fact, it was put on the market as recently as a month ago, on July 11. So this is already giving us some of the context, some of the fabric, some of the dynamics going into this tragedy. Bear in mind, July 11 is less than four weeks before Kylie's life was cut short. In yesterday's live, we made an effort to get to know Kylie better, despite much of her social media being set to private. Another way to get to know Kylie's interiority is by simply examining her home in more detail. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment. A big thank you to the hundreds of you who have subscribed in the last couple of days. And let's get started. So we're going to start with the lodge. I think the imminent departure from Kylie's childhood home was a source of stress and uncertainty and maybe even tension leading into the summer of 2022. Bear in mind, in the same year that she's graduating, she's also going to be you know, leaving her family home forever and not only her, her family. And one also wonders whether that was part of the thinking in graduating early, because to graduate later would mean selling the home late and being tied into, being bound to all the obligations of being there. And so I think the sale was time to coincide with Kylie's graduation. As soon as she graduates, then we'll, we'll leave um, so we don't disrupt her. Selling the 2,710 square foot cabin, which is from a four bedroom lodge, it didn't just mean Kylie was uprooting her life, but her entire family. So you can imagine if Kylie felt stress and uncertainty, so did her mother, so did everyone who was staying there. It was something that was, I think, weighing on them to some extent. And you want, sometimes you want a bit of relief from that. You want a bit of an escape from that burden, if that makes sense. Now that the place is up for sale, we are um, we have the information that the owner of the lodge is Kylie's grandfather, David Robertson. He's asked 1.75 million for it. It's quite an interesting number. It's a similar number that we saw in the Barry Morphew case when when that home was up for sale. Robertson is the guy Kylie's seen playing stand-up bass with while she's on the mandolin singing in one TikTok. You get a sense of sort of almost rural family charm from this, right? But isn't there also perhaps innocence and naivety in terms of the city life and the city kids? It's just a question that comes up. According to what realtor Jim Wiggins of Corcoran Global Living told The Sun, quote, the family were just tired from running the business for so long and had cleaned the place up real well before Kylie's disappearance. I've spoken to them and they're devastated but are relieved she was finally found. They're coping as best as they can, end quote. You can imagine the fatigue and drain of prepping the place to put it on the market and that it was something that Kylie also felt and wanted escape or relief from. Does that make sense? Now, according to the New York Times, quote, the Lost Trail Lodge and its brethren, similarly isolated hotels scattered across the United States and Canada, managed to make deprivation appealing. These are places that really force you to get away from it all. They allow no calls to the office or dashes to the computer just to check in. The only blackberries are the ones on the bushes, end quote. Well, that blackberry reference should give you an idea of the age of this article. It was written in 2007, and I'm sure things have changed over the past 15 years. But it's likely internet and Wi-Fi came slowly to the Lost Trail Lodge. And even if it did come there, that wasn't going to change the 
degree of accessibility, it's difficult to access. It takes time to get in and get out. You don't want to just nip off to the shop for a chocolate or whatever, a pack of smokes. You, you can't do that. And so these sorts of places tend to punt the absence of facilities like internet and television as amenities as part of their charm. That might be a novelty for jaded city slickers, but think about what that would feel like for a kid growing up there. I think it would be a major bummer. The New York Times also noted in 2007, quote, missing other amenities like landline phones and internet connection or direct road access for most of the year. To earn your bubble bath, you have to hike, use cross-country skis or snowshoes, and once at the lodge, you're cut off from the outside world. The isolation is particularly striking since technically the Lost Trail Lodge is only four and a half miles away from Interstate 80 and Truckee, California. Wow, the Lost Trail Lodge is isolated. Imagine that. <laughs> I was given quite a hard time yesterday on this very issue. Um, no, why, why would Kylie be isolated? Well, it looks like after living there for years, that isolation got too much for the whole family. According to another site, meow.com, quote, Kylie grew up there and had been living at the lodge until she disappeared. Now that she's gone, the family is even more motivated to move ahead with the sale of this property. And now we move on to Jagger. If Kylie's family are trying to celebrate her life now, watch the sunrise, enjoy its light and move forward, Jagger, Kylie's ex, is remembering a relationship with a former girlfriend in a new way. According to The Sun, Jagger posted a video on Instagram. I'll put a link to that post. It is actually quite touching. It's actually quite interesting seeing Kylie moving and the two kids sort of messing around um, you get a sense of their youthfulness and liveliness and uh, and then he also left a message on that video um, just saying how um, that he needed to save that moment of holding her close to sunset and also just paying tribute to her saying you know I'm going to live the way you would want me to live so it's quite quite touching. One has a sense that Kylie's death will be reshaping the lives of many around her. And that then brings us to my mea culpa. Uh, the last thing an authentic channel wants to do is spread false or inaccurate information, whether that's by mistake and certainly not intentionally. And I did that in my previous video. It was a video that purported to be the Prosser party in name and date, but it wasn't a genuine article. As soon as I became aware of this, I changed the title. I did consider taking the video down, but I thought the footage, because it's a sort of exemplar of the real thing, it's a party, lots of kids, it's somewhere out in the woods, it's not just a small party, it looks like there are hundreds of kids, there are cars, loud music, and girls. I thought it does give one a visceral sense of what Kylie may have experienced. Obviously, we don't have the real footage. I don't know if we're ever going to get it. This gave us a bit of a peek into that world. And um, although I um, identified the video as fake, it really did take off very uh, quickly. It's currently my second most popular video on this case at, at the time. And I dare say, had I not changed the title, it would have been number one. That's how quickly and easily lies and fakery can spread online. That's also how quickly you assume something is true and don't think about it. So I assembled the video when I should have been sleeping and in the dim recesses of my brain, I did wonder if this is such an important piece of, if this is such important archival footage, how come no one else has found it? But then I proceeded regardless. Fake news, do you see, is sometimes designed to mimic the real thing. And sometimes it mimics the real thing by accident. So the person who put this up did so intentionally to mislead. When I put it up, I'm, I misled you guys accidentally. 
I think one of the litmus tests for information like this is how easy it is to come by. So one of the signs of fake news is it just lands in your lap. It's just so easy. It's like, I need that information. Well, there it is. And if it's really so groundbreaking, why isn't anyone else talking about it? Why are you the first one to come across it? Why isn't it making headlines? You need it and it's suddenly there. That's usually when it's fake. In true crime, getting to the truth is hard and takes time and effort. When answers come quick and easy, all too easy. Well, it's often because someone has given up searching and decided to cheat instead. I think the same applies to relationships. Getting to someone that is genuine and the right person for you also isn't really that easy. It takes time and effort. Somebody telling you what you want to hear, exactly what you want to hear, like right off the bat, when it's so quick and easy, when it's so plain and simple, it's often because something, maybe you've given up searching for the right person. Maybe someone is cheating that process instead. And don't you sometimes feel that with Google, where you're searching for something and it gives you exactly what you want and you feel like saying, you know, Google, exactly what I want to hear isn't exactly what I want to hear or see. Anyway, apologies for my failure to think critically. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.